Your PCL program is a list of instructions that presentation will perform when you run the scenario. Like any programming language, PCL utilizes variables, which are structures that either contain numerical data or refer to objects. Variables are accessed using names that you give them. When you give an object a name in SDL, a PCL variable with that name is automatically created for you, which refers to that object. You will use those variables to manipulate or use those objects. The most useful type of PCL statement is called a method call. A method call is used to perform some action which utilizes an object. To make a method call, first type a variable name. For example, I created a picture object in SDL with name pick1. After the variable name, type a period. The editor will display a list of actions that can be taken using that object. We call these things methods. The reference page in the presentation documentation for each type of object contains a list of all these methods. Many methods have direct relationships to the object properties discussed in Part 1 of this tutorial. Any related methods are linked from each property description. Once again, please note that when starting out, it is important to also read the sections in the main documentation describing that object type. I will use the present method, which will display the graphics contained in this picture on the screen. After the method name, we need opening and closing parentheses, which contain any information called arguments describing the action to be taken. The present method has no arguments, so nothing is between the parentheses. Don't forget the semicolon to separate this statement from the next one. As another method call example, we can change the text contained in our text object. The setCaption method requires an argument, and the editor will give us a hint about what it is. The documentation tells us that for this change to be visible, we need to reconstruct this graphic using the redraw method. I will then draw this picture to the screen again. Let's run the scenario again. This time the scenario displayed something, but it went by pretty fast. This is because after the first graphic we immediately displayed another one. The word hello was on the screen for a single vertical refresh of the monitor. The word world was also on the screen for a single vertical refresh before the scenario ended. In order to control the stimulus timing, I will use one of presentation's most basic features called a trial. Trial objects contain stimulus sequences and can automatically handle their presentation with prescribed timing and other behavior. For example, you might leave each visual stimulus on the screen for two seconds or you might leave them there until a certain button press, etc. Please see the trial section of the documentation for complete details and the trial reference page for property and SDL information. For now, don't worry too much about the specific format or parameters. The trial description in SDL begins with trial parameter definitions. I will make this trial last for one second. After parameter definitions comes a list of what we call stimulus events. A stimulus event uses a stimulus object along with parameters that describe a particular presentation of that stimulus. I will present our picture, pick 1. I'll present it as soon as the trial starts by requesting a trial time of 0. Another common stimulus event parameter is code, whose definition will cause presentation to log event information for that stimulus presentation. The code value is used to identify that stimulus presentation in the event data. I will name the stimulus event and also name the trial. Now in my PCL program, instead of using the pictures present method, I will use the trials present method. The trial present method will tell presentation to perform the stimulus sequence contained in the trial. If you're wondering why there was a different color behind the text, this is because text objects also have a background which can be transparent or a solid color, or both. If we look at the text reference page, we see that the default value of the background co color property, which we didn't define, is the value of the default background color header parameter. 
The default value of that parameter, which we also didn't define, is solid black. To make everything the same color, we could define the background color for our text object. We could also use the default background color header parameter, which also affects picture objects. Many parameters can be handled in an analogous way. To view the logging of our stimuli, we can display the analyzer window. Here we can see information for the two stimuli, identified by the code we give them. Notice that these events are not exactly one second apart, as we had requested. This is because of the vertical refresh of the monitor. For information about this, see the Picture Timing Control section of the documentation. Let's do one more method call to summarize what's happened so far. First, use SDL descriptions to create objects for use in the scenario. The parameter definitions in SDL determine the initial state of the objects when the scenario starts. To perform some action using an object with a method call, type the name of the variable referring to that object, then a period. If necessary, consult the reference page for that object type to see descriptions of all the methods. Enter the method name and opening parenthesis, any arguments, and a closing parenthesis. Our definition of code in SDL gave the initial value of that property. After the first presentation, we can use a method call to change it. We can see the effect of this in the event data.